Hey everybody, welcome to the What's Second up? Timothy Project. Thanks for tuning in one more time. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Uh, today we're just going to jump in and explore the idea. What idea? Should Christians always be happy? Of course they should. Why, you pretty much a godless even if you're not. That's, I think that's, we're done. We're done here, right? Oh. We're good? Okay. You um, don't have anything else to that's kind of the attitude that I see sometimes. Yeah. At, when I'm at a church, if I'm, truth, obviously. if I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not <laughs> acting that way, you know. In all seriousness, though, I mean, you bring up a good point that I do get that feeling sometimes. And I, and I, guys, I've been in church since I've been born, yeah. and I've been in several different churches. Yeah. That I get the idea that if I'm in months. church, yeah, <laughs> yeah, since I was minus nine months, I've been in church, and. You know, there's been a few months in my life here or there I haven't been in, but I've been in, you know, five, six different churches, and all of them for at least extended period of time, e amounts of years, yeah. to kind of explore those churches and what's going on there. And I'm not saying this as a 100% concrete rule, because there's obviously exceptions sure, in different churches, but from my personal experience, overall, I've experienced in the church culture that I need, to, because I'm a Christian, and just for that point only, I should be happy. And I mean all the time at church. It doesn't have to be necessarily a big cheesy grin happy, but I need to have it together. I need to, you know, because I'm trusting in God, you know, life is good. And, uh, you know, I... It looks like this sometimes. So, how you been doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Good? good. Yeah. You, feeling, you feeling blessed? Yeah, very blessed. Yeah, me too. I'm feeling pretty blessed. Well, that's awesome, brother. All right, let's get to greet you. Let's go sit down somewhere else and watch somebody speak for an hour. Right. That's Exactly. I'm so happy and blessed to... And, and, and we qualify that as we've checked up on each other mm -hmm. and that's fellowship and we're coming to church. Fellowship, yeah. Yeah, but we haven't really explored each other's lives at all. We haven't even had a chance. Yeah. We've given each other a chance to be real or to think through things or to talk through things that we're struggling with. And this may not may or may not be, be your experience, but the overall experience I've gotten and the message I've received from these 29 years I've spent in different churches is that I need to have my attitude adjusted on that positive end of things. Yeah. That I need to be given those, I'm doing well, I'm doing good, life is good because I'm a Christian type uh, responses to questions, or else I must not be you know, a, trusting Jesus right now. I must not be close mm -hmm. to Him if for some reason I'm not happy. You don't have strong for some faith. Reason I'm, yeah, my faith is not strong. Yeah. I must be wandering from far from God if, I, if I'm at all downcast, or wondering about God, or, or doubting things, or you know, being very real about my emotions or my concerns. Yeah. And so, you know, what do you think about that, Travis? Do you, yeah, do you yeah, you know, because ultimately, I, I agree. I think, I mean, because I was joking earlier, but honestly, I understand what we're saying. Like, we're talking about when people are sort of putting on that mask of, oh, everything's great. I, I follow Jesus, so my life's just, you know, rainbows and sunshine. Even though, deep down, I may be struggling with something, I may be doing something I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. I may be, you know, going, you know, going through a divorce. I may be somebody might have just died. And might have died. Yeah. I might be really grieving. And yeah. what, there might be. And what we're talking about is people often believe that they just have to put on the facade of having everything together. That I am a super Christian. I don't want to. And that, you know, a little bit of that is American culture. You know, well, in American culture, we don't want to show our failures. We don't right. want to show our problems. We want to be vulnerable. Right, we don't want to be vulnerable. But what we're taught in American culture, it's been that way in America since probably well, the beginning. Western culture. And, and, and Western culture, yeah, too. In that, you know, independence. Yeah. You know, I don't depend on anybody else. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I can take care of myself. You know, I'm meeting my needs. I've got everything that I need. Yeah. And Scripture is the opposite. Being Christian is the opposite. God actually teaches us that we should be dependent on Him. And yeah. We need to be dependent on each other as fellow believers. As There's a Christian. bit of church history that kind of explains it, and just stay with me for a second, but, you know, you have, um, you know, Arminians and Calvinists, you know, branches of, of Christian thinking that broke out, you know, hundreds of years ago. You know, you had the Catholics and the Protestants. You had, you know, all, since the birth of Christianity, you've had different thoughts come out of it. And one of the thoughts that really started, I want to say, right around John Calvin's time, was the idea that, like, you know, predestination, okay? I'm predestined by God to be a certain way. So the wealthy would often assert that, oh, well, I'm wealthy, therefore I'm blessed by God. Right. Well, if you weren't wealthy, you were poorer, you would say, you know, I'm feeling blessed, I'm, my life is fine. You would you yeah. would sort of, I'm not rooting everything in that, but you can kind of see just historically how 
there, there's people who've always kind of thought that, okay, my happiness, my joy, how I, pre per, how I uh, present myself yes. reflects how godly I am. Yes. And obviously what we're saying here is the Bible just does not support that. It, right. You know, the, and the overall idea, if you don't mind me saying, yeah. that I seem to get from church nowadays is that when I go to church, the expectation is that I get something out of it. Mm -hmm. The expectation yeah, is that yeah. I get uplifted. The expectation is that my emotional needs are met. Mm -hmm. The expectation is that if I don't experience those things and I don't walk out of church feeling better emotionally and maybe even mentally in some ways, or maybe with my relationships with a few people who've smiled at me and said nice things to me, that I didn't meet God today, yeah. that it wasn't a good church service, mm -hmm. that I'm not closer to God today, I'm, I'm, uh, something's wrong because I feel bad or because I don't feel better. Yeah. And, you know, and so things have been avoided recently, and you see it in the American church. Just look, research it, look it up. The, you know, the lead, it's fading right now in the American church to talk about things like sin, to use the word sin, to talk about hell talk about the doctrine of hell, talk about repentance or mm -hmm. grieving or hurting the Holy Spirit with our actions or having to have responsibilities to God and accountability to God for our actions. You know, you don't go in very many church services and hear those kind of things preached, even though they're all over Scripture. And it's because those are, can be kind of emotional. You know, if yeah. we're struggling or we're going emotionally through stuff, convicting. those are emotionally convicting. Those are what people would make call just kind of a downer. Mm -hmm. you know, I, didn't, I didn't come to church to, have, to experience a downer. I came here to be uplifted. And we get it backwards because if we look at the scripture we're about to look at in a little bit, you know, Jesus didn't promise these things. Jesus mm -hmm. didn't promise happiness if we followed him. Jesus didn't promise that all our circumstances would be met the way we want them to be yeah. and all our circumstances would be fixed. You know, he didn't, he didn't promise those things. So let's look at some scripture and yeah, see go, uh, what it James, says. And it's James chapter 4, four. And I want you to really seriously hear what's what this is the scripture. This we're going to bring it all together but because it's going to sound kind of harsh, but just... Stick with yeah. us and understand what we're saying. We're not going far off in left field in either direction. Or at least we're trying not to. We want to stay. We want to yes. present the scriptures honestly. So let's let's check it out. James chapter four, starting in verse one. Uh, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you are wrong because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions, you adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is no that it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace, therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yeah. Verse 7, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy be turned to gloom. Humble yourselves, verse 10, before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Boom! Those are tough words to Gosh, hear. Gosh, yeah. You know, I mean, but listen to what it's saying there. It's telling us, stop laughing. Stop going to church and putting that smile on your face. Stop acting like everything's okay. Because within that attitude is, is us. And I can admit this about myself. When I come to church with an attitude, I'm hiding things. I'm hiding my friendship with the world. I'm hiding the things that I'm doing that I know aren't pleasing to God that people might not think great about me if I share them. But I'm that's from that mask. That mask. That mask at church of I've got things together and I'm doing what I'm supposed to. And I wear the and I might, maybe might wear the right things. I might put on the right face so that that seems so, yeah. but the reality doesn't match what's happening when I walk in the church doors. And so I want us to hear that. Not every service has to be that way. Not every Coming together, the believers needs to be that wretched and mourning and weeping. But mm -hmm. if it's never happening, that must also be an issue. I mean, that's got to be a problem because that means that we as a church are not really sorry about what's going exactly. on. We as a church are afraid to talk about those things. We're not we're still addressing letting, it. Yeah, we're not addressing it. We're still letting shame and conviction or guilt like 
live in our hearts, yeah. when we could be free, when we could be experiencing forgiveness, when you bottle we could be that helping up, each other. When you bottle that up, it's just a recipe for destruction. When you hide it, it's just a recipe to fail. I mean, there's a reason why Jesus called us to fellowship in this body called the church. There's a reason why we're told to confess our sins to each other, not just to God. The Bible talks about confessing to each other. It's sort of, it's a structure set up to help us when we're going through that. But the church, in a lot of ways, has turned it into a kind of a facade. Yeah. You know, some churches are doing it right. And, you know, you can see things in small groups and people who who are like, you know, really growing those yes. relationships. There are well, certainly pockets where this has happened. But like I said, in our experience, overall, been that if, you, if I'm just Joe Blow meeting you one Sunday a week and just saying, hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. And you just say, good, I'm blessed. There's not, that's not reality. No. There's no real... There was no connection. There's no there. connection. There's no love. There's no brotherhood. There's no confession. There's no support. There's no encouraging. And that's what we're saying. The Bible says, hey, listen, if you're struggling, if you're sinning, you should be mournful. If you're making mistakes, if you're going through something, you should do the appropriate actions, not just, yeah. hey, hey, everything's great. I have grace, and we're just going to go to church, and I'm going to have these feelings. And That's right. It's, yeah, you know. And we're deceiving ourselves. It's not what we're called to do. It's not what Jesus said we're supposed to do. So next we're going to look at what Jesus said about these things in Luke chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 20. Mm-hmm. Um, this this is the way you should look, and this is the way you should not look as far as, as a Christian. And uh, this is going to be in the New Living Translation. This is the NLT. Travis was reading earlier from the ESV in case you're interested in what translations we were following along in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you because you follow the Son of Man. When that happens, when those things happen, people mocking you, cursing you for the fact that you follow Jesus, when that happens, be happy. He has leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets, the men of God, the same way. What's, and he counteracts that with what sorrow awaits you who are rich, for you have only your happiness now. What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets. Mm. You know, that desire to be, you know, I have a desire to be well liked. I have, I do have, have it's a, but it, uh, if I'm honest, it's a selfish desire. It's yeah. a desire to, it's a facade. It's, I want people to think that I've got it together. But the fact is, if I really want to, for God to lift me up, if I really want closeness with God, mm-hmm. if I really want to be able to tell the devil to flee, if I really want to be able to have him lift me up, then I have to be humble. I have, and it starts with me in the church. Yeah. It starts with me being real. It starts with me confessing my sins. It starts with me being willing to turn my joy into weeping and mourning. You yeah. know, I can't go and tell other people what to do first. I've got to address it myself. You got to take the mask off. I've got to be willing to take be my own real, mask off. Be real. Be vulnerable before God. You know. I mean, ultimately. So, what are, you know, what are you saying, Travis? Stephen, you know, is it is it rainbows and sunshine, or is it just weeping and gnashing of teeth? Is it like I just got to put ash on my head and tear my clothes? The honest truth is, it's wherever you are currently right now. That's right. You know, and be honest about it. Sometimes you're going to have those mountaintop experiences where you want to share the joy of the Lord with people. And you're going to be like, wow, I'm so happy and blessed. Yes. There's going to be times where you're going to be going through so much suffering, so much struggle. Because the Bible promises that, that there's going to be times of suffering and struggle. And, and where you're making mistakes or people around you are making mistakes, you're feeling alone maybe. And you have to be vulnerable enough to say, you know what, guys, I need prayer. I need help. I'm going through this. I'm struggling through this. And, and you know, have a, a team of people that you can rely on. You can trust them. It's called, hopefully in the church, that's where that's God right. wants us to find that. But it starts with you taking that mask off and being vulnerable to God, confessing, being real. God knows. God's, God's been there. He understands. Jesus was tempted in all ways. Yeah. So he can relate to us when he was crucified as a proper substitution. The Bible says he knows it all. So it's easy to... It, it, it's not, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's what's required of us. And it's something that when you do it, you realize it's exactly where you were supposed to be. 
and what you were supposed to do. It's very freeing. It's very, it's free. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm just going to be honest right here, but, you know, between Travis, myself, and our friend Steffi, who's running the camera, you know, we come together and we're able to share these things yeah. in ways that we don't always share with everybody else. And it's always a very freeing experience. It's always a very encouraging experience. And it's, it, it lets us reveal who we really are and it helps us not to be ashamed or full of guilt because we've got people who are helping us and praying for us and encouraging us. And that's something that we feel like needs to spread in the church. You know, I think it's happening between small groups or maybe pairs of people. But church culture needs to realize this yeah. is unhealthy. This attitude that we have that we need to come to church dressed up right, looking right, and all together. Speak it We've right. got to start coming, right. speaking, yeah. saying the right words. Yeah. You know, we so, can't stop pleasing people, and we've got to start pleasing our God. And, you know, so should we be happy? It depends on the situation. Depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. But I guarantee you this, if you come before God and you humble yourself before Him, He will lift you up. God didn't say you'll always be happy. He said He'd never leave you and He'd never forsake you. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in with us again. We really appreciate it. I know this was kind of a heavy one, yeah. uh, but thanks for, for seeing it through to the end. Uh, we hope you really think through it, take the time. You know, we'd be being somewhat hypocritical if we weren't real today with this message. I had fun. I thought this was a good message, good I topic. It too. You know, it's, people, it's really freeing when you can just be vulnerable and you can talk about you know, what, God's going, what you're going through and how God wants to reveal it to you in your life. It's awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it. See you next it. time.